Hello students. Today we are going to talk about the transverse vibrations of a string or a cable. In this figure, we can see a tightly stretched string which is along the x direction and the reflection of the string is in the z direction. The string is acted upon by external force of magnitude f per unit length. We are going to consider a small elemental length dx of this string which is at a distance of x from the origin. Now we look at this figure which is showing this elemental length dx in enlarged view. We can see that there is a force P plus dp on the right hand side of this string element and there is a force P which is acted on the left hand side while the string is making angle theta plus d theta and theta respectively on the right hand and left hand side. We are going to write the force balance equation of this string using Newton's second law in the z direction. We can see here that the force P plus dP is having a vertical component of magnitude P plus dP sine theta plus d theta. While on the left hand side the force P is having magnitude of P sine theta in the vertical direction but in the opposite direction so that's why there is a negative sign here. The force per unit length is given by F and for the elemental length dx it will be F dot dx. So all these three forces are acting on this string element. Now as per the Newton's second law this should be equal to the mass times acceleration of the body. If rho is the mass per unit length of the body then rho dot dx will be the mass of this elemental length. As w is the deflection in the vertical direction there, so del square w by del t square will provide the acceleration. So this completes our equilibrium of the forces in the z direction. Now we can define few more terms. For an elemental length change in the tension P which is dP can be written as rate of change of P with respect to x dot dx. So del P by del x dot dx will be equal to dP. For small angle theta we can say that sin theta should be approximately equal to tan theta. Now tan theta is nothing but the slope on the left hand side. So this is going to be del w by del x and sin theta plus d theta will same way equal to tan theta plus d theta for small angle value and therefore it will be the slope on the right hand side of this and it will be given by the slope on the left hand side del w by del x plus rate of change of slope del square w by del x square multiplied by dx. We are going to insert the equation 2, 3 and 4 in equation 1 and it will provide us with the equation 5. Now for a uniform string with constant tension and free vibration this equation 5 will reduce to the equation p del square w by del x square equal to rho del square w by del t square. Here we are going to neglect the small terms as the multiplication of del p by del x multiplied by del square w by del x square dot dx. The term p del w by del x will get cancelled out also. 
and for the free vibration this f by dx will be equal to 0. So this will reduce to the equation which is shown here. If we assume c square equal to p by rho we can write it in a more concise form as c square del square w by del x square equal to del square w by del t square. This particular equation is called as a wave equation. Now as this equation is a second order equation in space and also a second order equation in time, we are going to need two initial conditions and two boundary conditions to solve it. The two initial conditions can be given by the value of displacement at time t equal to 0 which can be written as w0x and the value of velocity del w by del t at time t equal to 0 which can be written as w0 dot x. Now for the boundary condition part usually the strings comes with the fixed end conditions. So in those case where the both ends are fixed the deflection w will be 0 at x equal to 0 as well as x equal to l for all the time t equal to 0. In some particular cases one end of the string is fixed in a pin and that pin can move in a slot so it will not allow the slope to carry so therefore in that case the del w by del x at that particular end will be zero. In our next lecture we will see how we are going to solve this wave equation. Thank you.